Okay, so if we use the Cartesian coordinates uh, to represent the poles, then we get a direct relation between the real part of the poles and how fast the uh, oscillations decay in terms of time. For example, uh, <coughs> take a look at these black poles. They have uh, the real part is minus 0 0.5, which means the time constant for those poles is negative one over that. That gives us two seconds. Okay, so this gives us this uh, tells us the following. If you want to place an envelope for the black response, so let me try to do that. The envelope should be going like that. Uh, so this black envelope should have a uh, time constant of two seconds, and that means then it reaches 95% of its final value within uh, three time constants, which is about six seconds, and this is that seems about right, right? Uh, so the 95% happens somewhere around this point, and that is very close to six seconds. And uh, again, if you use the, the Cartesian coordinates, Uh, the, the vertical component, which is the imaginary part, gives us the frequency value. So, uh, th they all have the same imaginary part, which is true. What does that give us? Uh, that gives us the following. The oscillating term should be like that, cosine 2t. Okay? Uh, so, this completes the cycle in 2 pi. So, 2t, whenever that becomes 2 pi, that completes one cycle. So, this gives us that Uh, the period should be pi. Okay, so that seems about right, right? The, the period. So this should be around pi, which seems uh, to be pretty close, about three point something. Doğru. Yaklaşık pi üzerinde. Dolayısıyla o şey veriyor. So that gives the, the period of the or the frequency of the oscillations. Um, and then I told you that instead of using these Cartesian coordinates, we can also uh, express them in terms of uh, omega n and zeta. Uh, and that has other benefits. Um, oh. Well, first of all, that zeta we defined is known as the damping ratio. Um, hmm. 